it's quite hard. You already erased all the topics that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is a good sign, I think, for this evening, that we're on the same page when it comes to our priorities here. Esteemed President Maksud, esteemed uh, uh, members of the board, uh, all members of PGCCI and friends, Shubo Shanta, Ami Jarmandu Dabashel, Ugo Prota Nashudut, Amar Nami Yanovsky. Good evening to all of you. <laughs> okay, I see we have a good crowd tonight. <laughs> no, uh, in all seriousness, I want to first, of course, uh, thank President Maksud uh, for his kind invitation today to me uh, here at PGCCI's first networking uh, event after the new board was elected. Congratulations again. I already celebrated with you uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, I, I, I like that we keep a uh, close rhythm in our uh, engagement. Um, he kindly asked me to give a quick overview over uh, our Bangladeshi-German relations, especially in the economic area, and I'll try to do it as quickly and as, as succinct as possible. Uh, on a personal note, I have arrived roughly a year ago here in Bangladesh, and um, it was quite a roller coaster ride, even if I just take my economic portfolio at the end of the city. I arrived when Sri Lanka just um, uh, went bankrupt, when emerging signs and cracks in Pakistan uh, became the to hot topic, and obviously the first question from Berlin I got was, is Bangladesh the next domino? Uh, and I had no idea, <laughs> I just came here. Um, and people told me they just came, most of the businesses after COVID, uh, from an enormous boom cycle actually, a, a good mood in the economy. And I felt that here on the ground. Um, then, of course, we had emerging warning signs from your main export market, my home country, Germany and others, because of the illegal aggression of Russia against Ukraine, where there were a lot of question marks on whether we could keep up the demand. There were articles in the Bangladeshi media and all over the world whether German homes would be able to heat, uh, be heated in the winters and what, what that would mean for especially the RMG sector, but for our overall engagement. And I can tell you, uh, all of these doomsday scenarios in Germany were not true. We became independent of Russian uh, energy. Uh, we are stronger now, only half a year later. And I think this is a lesson that many countries around the world can take from this Russian aggression, that it is possible to become independent, that it is possible to diversify your sources, your, to diversify your supply chains. Then we saw a little bit of a, I would say, a middle ground phase where business kept on developing in many areas. But in the last few months, uh, I, I felt there's a little bit more sense of, of pessimism again with many actors when it comes to letter of credit, when it comes to the mid and long term perspective of their business. Um, but on the overall, I must say, um, I have worked in, in, in many countries around the world, I've seen many countries around the world, uh, but the potential I see in Bangladesh is the one thing that gives me the hope and that lets me still say, Bangladesh is not a domino, Bangladesh is one of our growing emerging markets that we have to do more, where there has to be more German presence, where there has to be more German investment. You have a young country with immense potential. I see it every day. I'm not only heading the economic section, I'm in the press section, the foreign policy section, in the security section. I meet young people from all walks of life of Bangladesh who want to do something with their lives. And it's amongst, like we, all of us, we have to create the opportunities for that. There are more Bangladeshis under 30 years than Germans in the world. Those people need opportunities. Um, Bangladesh is, of course, worldwide recognized as one of the fastest growing and most stable growing economies in the world. And as uh, Maksud, you already uh, pointed out, the graduation will be a huge challenge. I think there was a very festive mood when you were graduating, in the, in the, when you had all the factors together, when you could say you were graduating, and then a lot of people thought of what it actually means to graduate and what a hard work comes afterwards. Uh, and we are in the middle of this process. I'm very encouraged that more and more Bangladeshi government delegations come to Europe to get a better understanding of our situation, of what we expect for GSP Plus, for the supply chain, supply chain laws, and other uh, emerging trends in the EU. I think this is very encouraging. Um, at the same time, the discussions in Brussels are still ongoing. Uh, I, do not, I, I, I do not tell you a secret if I tell you that the GSP regulations are under discussion now in Brussels 
and um, if uh, they land on, on certain areas where the discussion might be headed now, this can have serious, serious consequences for Bangladesh. I can even envision a scenario where Bangladesh gains access to the GSB scheme, but then when the RMG sector falls out of it, what does that mean for the country in total, right? So we have to have a very close look, we have to have a very thorough analysis of the mood in Brussels, what is going on in Brussels, in each member state, where the regulations fall on, and what Bangladesh's job is to do um, so we can really have the framework for the next few years and decades. And the others around you are not sleeping. I just tell them, um, sometimes I meet people who are very, very um, confident about the RMG sector in Bangladesh, and I see why. You have done a great job. Um, but Vietnam has concluded a free trade agree agreement, including RMG sector, with the EU. So your neighbors, the region, the competitors, they are not sleeping, and Bangladesh has to keep up with that challenge. That being said, as I said, many German companies believe in Bangladesh. When I arrived, we had less than 70 companies, German companies with a representative office. We already raised that number to close to 80 now. All the big brands, name one brand, and they have at least a sales office here. Uh, Audi, BASF, Bayer, BMW, Commerzbank, Deutsche Bank, Mercedes-Benz, Siemens, Bonstein, <laughs> just to name a few. You are, we are all the big players here, and with them, their experience and their networks. Other big companies like Aldi, Lidl, Chivo, Kik, they have huge sourcing operations in this country, which is also not to be underestimated. Those sourcing is maybe not the thing that you want, you know, you always go for big investment, but it is a sustainable way of engaging in the country and it creates tens of thousands of jobs. Um, and yes, while investment in general stays quite low from Germany, there are a few German companies who have invested quite enormous sums in especially EPZs. Um, they are primarily focusing on uh, RMG, but in other sectors we see also interest. And when we talk about diversification, I see you already talked about uh, quite a lot of sectors, and again, we have a lot of con congruent sectors there. I would just, from my own experience in one year here, point out maybe eight sectors very shortly. Power and energy. While I was here, I witnessed the first private-to-private -private partnership in financing a big, big power plant. This is unheard of in our economic uh, relations history so far. We always relied on development finance, on credit lines, on prefer preferred uh, uh, treatment. But I think we are now at a stage where more and more Bangladeshi companies have the skills, the know-how, the power, the vision to invest bigly and uh, bring in their own capital to a real uh, eye to eye partnership. And that is, I think, a big, big step in our relationship. And in the power and energy sector, are small little machines being imported, but we're going to more large scale, industrial scale agriculture in Bangladesh. Uh, it started from seedlings, we're going to whole production facilities, we're going to complicated high tech inputs, and what is very important, where I see a lot of interest and where there's a lot of, of synergies to be, to be met. I was just meeting, the, last week I was meeting with the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, laboratories, uh, analysis, analysis. Uh, quality assurement procedures, big, big laboratories. This is something that Bangladesh still lacks, but for uh, more market access, for quality assurances, Bangladesh needs more of that, and Germany, no wonder, is one of the leading providers for these technologies. Farmer sector, another one, we have SEPTA as, a, as, a, as our uh, sponsor today, and SEPTA, I think, is one of the success stories in the last few years. Uh, the farmer sector, Germany, again, can help in many, many areas, from packaging over chemical inputs up to whole production lines. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, think, I think there's a lot uh, to be done uh, in a win-win spirit. Mobility. No German car maker produces here, uh, contrary to other countries. But I see a, a clear direction into more and more complicated fabrication in the country. We see it in the bicycle sector, where we had, in the beginning, just a little bit of assembly, and now we get to more and more complicated models. There's motorbikes being assembled, 
Uh, other countries have shown that, uh, that automobile production is possible in this country, and this is an area that I'm also personally pushing for, because obviously that is a lot of value creation in the country. And we are one of the, uh, at the forefront of trying to establish e-mobility in this country. You know that the German car makers here are, are amongst the leaders of e-mobility, and in the, in the moment it might not be an economic argument uh, for many, but uh, they are starting. We are talking about creating the infrastructure for large-scale rollout, uh, and even in, in areas like the e-rickshaw, we are we are invested through SolShare and other German uh, companies. So even there, I see a lot of potential. Information and communication technology. A lot of the startups in Germany especially in Berlin, this creative city, rely heavily on labor here in Bangladesh. ICT freelancers working, programming from Bangladesh. Those are not always the best working environments. We can work together to improve that and put it into a more structured way of our cooperation. In the textiles and apparel uh, sector, we see the need for more value creation here. And we see the trend that Germany is doing more complicated, functional wear, outdoor wear, camping uh, equipment, more uh, value creation here in Bangladesh. Luxury and consumer goods, you all are aware of the HSBC report uh, talking about Bangladesh being one of the biggest consumer markets by the end of the decade. We see that demand for simple German kitchens, German bathroom equipment, tiles, home decoration. This is a topic that is increasingly not only a Gulshan and Barida and Banani issue, but it's spreading to the country and we see the demand coming in um, and that is a future market for us to explore. And obviously I can't say too many details about it, but I think defense, security, equipment and services, this is also something where we have seen some light tower projects in the past and just today I had another very interesting talk on the topic, so I see also an expanded uh, scope of cooperation there. So you see, we are planning a lot for the future. We see a lot of potential. Uh, we just concluded the visit of a, uh, our eminent expert on the supply chain law, uh, chain law in, uh, uh, in Germany. And he was amazed. He did a tour before of Vietnam and of Cambodia. And he said in Vietnam and Cambodia, he had to start really at the ground level. Like, what is that law? What is the main facts? After having a few events here in Bangladesh, he said, like, why am I even here? People already know it, they already, the German companies already enacted, but see this as a big, big chance. These things are not tariff barriers, trade barriers, these are chances. Like the Accord, like LEED certifications, these, these supply chain laws, those are added values, that, those are things that Bangladesh can proudly, uh, proudly present itself to their export markets, that they are here producing under the highest, highest standards. And there's more trade delegations coming in. We're constantly working, me and my colleague Mehra, we're two people in the economic section, we're working on three trade delegations coming in uh, simultaneously. So I think you get the picture. There's a lot more to be explored and to be done. At the same time, the truth is also, we're facing a lot of hand headwinds, both globally and locally. Globally, we live in a time, and I think this is very important to make this point in Bangladesh, because sometimes the discussion for me is a little bit too easy. Um, we live in a time of de-risking and political and economical realignments in the world. You see it very openly. Um, so a question for me would be whether the branding that you see out of Bangladesh, some statements that you see out of Bangladesh, whether they are always helping the investment climate, especially in those markets uh, where you want to be engaged. Um, the situation is clearly tense at the moment due to Russia's barbaric invasion and ongoing invasion of Ukraine. It has disrupted public uh, global global supply chain, beginning from wheat going uh, to big automobiles and other sensitive areas. And I think uh, uh, Bangladesh, um, it would be good for Bangladesh to understand where we come from in this in this situation, um, and to understand that for Germany, this is our security directly targeted, uh, and so defending Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and with that the rules-based order um, is directly connected to our well-being and you being one of our biggest trade partners, it is directly connected to you. It's not a conflict far, far at the end of the world for you. Um, and especially from a, your own history in Bangladesh, you, I think you understand how important it is to defend the sovereignty, the wish of the people of a smaller country when it is being attacked by a bigger bully. 
Um, so I think we have to have that dialogue more and more. Um, also, we see uh, there are certain movements by Bangladesh in, in some directions. Let me give you one number. Uh, Bangladesh exports double the amount to Germany that Bangladesh exports to all BRICS countries together. I think that one number is enough said on that matter. Locally, of course, we also have challenges. Despite of the wide openness of Bangladesh in its announcements for investment, and I feel it every time I go to BIDA, I go to the ministries, the opportunities are there. The economic zones look great, but you already mentioned ease of business doing indices are not completely wrong. Maybe there's on the, on the ranking there's a little bit of a wiggling room here and there, but they are not completely wrong. Same thing for the transparency issues. The rankings there, placing Bangladesh a little bit above Taliban Afghanistan, are not something to be proud of as Bangladeshis, and it's not a big good plus if you want to attract investment. And Germany has a lot to offer to work on these areas through our development cooperation in the economic sector, uh, through our cooperation, through best practices that German companies do here. So I think there's a lot to be gained also to then attract more FDI into. And again, a sense of realism, I think, on the whole situation, especially the foreign currency reserves and the, the measures that need to be taken. I think uh, we had a very good event with, uh, with another German, organ German Bangladeshi organization, um, and we talked very in much detail about the budget, the plus and the cons, uh, how realistic all of these discussions are, and I, in, in this sense, I, I really highly welcome um, the new measures by the Bangladesh Bank. Uh, I think they are very good to regain some of the trust, of, especially of the international donors of the IMF. Uh, I think there is an increasing sense of, of, of seriousness um, to fulfill the commitments that were um, done between IMF and Bangladesh and uh, that gives us uh, a lot of, of confidence about the future. So a lot of hurdles, a lot of opportunities as always in life and what is the role of BGCCI and the embassy? Um, I'm very happy to hear that President Maksud has a very clear vision of where he wants to lead BGCCI, of what the steps are done. Um, that we work together on a, getting a clear understanding of what the situation in Germany and Bangladesh is, where our interests lie, where there might be interest divergences also. Uh, and given that we have no other recognized trade instruments here in Bangladesh, we have no Außenhandelskammer, GTAI sits in, in Delhi, it's very difficult for us to, to do trade promotion. I think uh, we should really pool all the resources we have here together and work together and at some point come closer to an official recognition. In this regard, I also want to raise one, I, I know, very, very uh, divisive issue, but I have to say it because just today we had another trade council's meeting in the EU. The European Chamber is also coming up, and I know there is a lot of issues surrounding it and a lot of, of discussion surrounding it. But I really want to ask you to, to see it as a chance, to see it as a chance to leverage your issues that you have here in the market that German companies are facing, that Bangladeshi companies are facing, into a bigger family. Because the EU, when it comes to trade, is a unified actor. Trade policy is not done in Berlin, Brussels, Warsaw or wherever. Trade policy done is unilaterally in Brussels. And so it makes sense that if we want to get ahead with our economic relationship to strengthen these instruments and to also positively see the opportunities arising from yet another chamber in Bangladesh. So with this, I want to pledge my allegiance to the newborn, uh, say uh, all the best to you and your endeavors. Again, I'm very happy that you have a clear vision and uh, I'm sure we will be in a very close dialogue on the, the way forward together. And tonight I just want, want to wish us good networking, good talks and a nice evening. So thanks again for inviting me. Thank you for your kind words. And